In Singapore nowadays, strange stray cats loitering around HDB lobbies has become uncommon and rare, partly due to the culling by the authorities. Moreover, many animal shelters put stray dogs and cats to sleep after a few days, except in the case of some no-kill shelters. Despite this, in recent times there is an increasing number of young Singaporeans following the likes of no-kill shelters, such as the Golden Heart Animal Rescue Centre in Myanmar. The Golden Heart Animal Rescue Centre cooks huge amounts of food for stray dogs and cats and gives them veterinary care. And just like the folks at Golden Heart, many youths nowadays are taking care of these stray cats in Singapore by feeding them and bringing them to the bed when they are sick. Often, these kind-hearted souls are unable to keep these cats at home because of reasons such as parental objection or lack of space, and thus they resort to helping these cats in whatever way they can. Despite these, the acts of these strangers, these stray cats still mostly suffer abuse, live in an unhygienic condition, and suffer many health problems as a result. This video examines in depth the case study of a free-roaming stray 5-year-old male cat that has difficulty passing urine. This is a Be Kind to Pets veterinary educational video sponsored by Topaya Vets. As this video contains surgical procedures, viewer discretion is advised. This stray cat was first brought to Topaya Vets on the 20th of February 2017 regarding a blocked bladder, where after being examined by the vets, he underwent a urinary catheterization to unblock his bladder. On the 11th of September, he was admitted one more time with the same complaint. In the case of the cat being unable to urinate, vets usually go through various tests in order to determine the root cause of the problem. The first thing that the vets wish to do is to determine if the animal has cystitis or complete obstruction of the urinary tract. In cystitis, the urinary tract is inflamed, resulting in a partial obstruction. During complete urethra obstruction, the feline has a urinary stone blocking the urethra, causing urine to build up in the bladder, making it full and large. Because of this, a urinary catheter is not able to pass through. To test this, urinary catheterization is usually used. In this process, firstly, a catheter is inserted into the urinary tract and the urine that drains out is collected. If the catheter does go in, it means that the reason for the problem is not a complete obstruction of the urinary tract. Once the flow stops, saline is syringed into the bladder to flush out debris. For this cat, using a syringe resulted in a dark, pusful urine. Moreover, leukocyte casts were also observed, which indicate the presence of a kidney disease. After the catheterization process itself, the urine and blood sample was sent for analysis, and an x-ray was taken. Each of these tests reveal a different aspect of the patient's problem. Firstly, taking an x-ray reveals that the patient has any bladder stones. In this cat, the lack of any visible stones on the x-ray has ruled out the possibility of bladder stones as being the cause of the obstruction. However, the enlarged size of the kidneys indicate that the cat has pyelonephritis which is a condition where the kidney has been infected with bacteria. Secondly, they sent a sample of the urine for analysis. The urine sample was described as yellow and turbid, as seen during the catheterization. The four pluses in the protein row means that the cat has proteinuria, or an increased level of proteins in the urine. This indicates that the cat has a very serious kidney disease, where due to a kidney inflammation, the cells break down, resulting in cell matter or protein in the urine. The plus sign in the bacteria role also indicates that there is an infection in the urinary tract. Finally, the blood analysis allows the vets to determine if there is any damage to the kidneys. This cat also exhibits a very high level of blood urea at more than 5 times the reference range and a very high creatinine level of 3-4 to four times the reference range. This confirms that the stray cat has acute kidney disease. Immediately after the catheterization, the cat was also given kidney dialysis where a drip is delivered under the skin. This rehydrates the cat and helps to mitigate some of the effects of the kidney disease. The cat was then hospitalized for 3 days and given antibiotics, an anti-inflammatory medication and a prescription diet, after which it was taken away by the caretaker to be allowed to roam in its area. As pet owners, here's what you can do if you do keep a tree line at home. Firstly, do know that kidney disease affects cats after 5 years of age, with male cats being more affected than female cats. Frequent health screenings, especially by blood and urine tests, is highly recommended to pick up early kidney disease in cats over 5 years of age. 
Moreover, you can also take measures to prevent kidney disease in the first place by making sure to keep your pet in the ideal weight range and giving them lots of water. However, if you observe symptoms such as straining to urinate and blood in the urine, immediately approach a vet for treatment. And if it is confirmed that your pet does have kidney disease, do try to feed it prescription feed such as these. Although these diets are not necessary all the time, using this diet when required helps you reduce the kidney workload and maintain a healthy kidney function allowing your pet to recover faster. For this stray cat, however, its problems will continue for a long time. Because the cat is a stray cat, it is always outdoors and on the move. However, prescription feed and medication can only be given to the cat by slowly training the cat to eat it. As such, it is not possible to give the cat a prescription diet. Considering that the caretaker has limited resources, the caretaker may also not be able to afford the medication of the time. Moreover, the kidney dialysis also has to be performed every day to maintain the health of the cat, which is just not possible as it is too expensive and time consuming. In the end, it is difficult to give the cat medication, a prescription diet and dialysis, which will result in the health of the cat deteriorating. Thus, we conclude that this stray cat is unlikely to live a long life due to its lifestyle.